Hey everyone, today LumaTouch released version 4 of their popular mobile editing app LumaFusion and it includes a new add-on called Multicam Studio that allows you to edit up to 6 angles of video and audio directly from your iPad or iPhone. Now I've been using it for several weeks and I'm super impressed with how fast and fluid it is on my M2 iPad Pro. It's also loads of fun. And if you're interested in learning more about editing in LumaFusion, I've included a link below to my full two-hour tutorial. Use this code to get 40% off for a limited time. So with that out of the way, let's do some multicam editing. In the media library, I've imported three sets of clips from three separate multicam shoots and color tagged them to keep my library organized. Before I can begin editing, I'll need to create a project. Tapping the Projects button brings up the Projects Manager. This window displays a stack of film strips representing all the projects that I created and worked on previously. I'll tap this button to create a new project. I'll tap My Project, then enter a custom name. Then tap Done. The frame rate, aspect ratio, and color space will be determined by the first clip I add to the project. To create the project and open it in an empty timeline, tap the plus button. Next, I'll need to create a multicam container to synchronize my clips. But before I do this, I need to point out that this feature requires a one-time purchase to access it. Tap the Help and Settings button, then tap Add-ons. This feature is called Multicam Studio and can be purchased for a one-time price of $19.99, which makes it permanently accessible whenever you're using LumaFusion. Since I've already purchased it, it appears under the Purchase section. To create a multicam container, I'll tap the Add Clip button, then tap this item at the bottom of the menu. An empty multicam container is placed into the primary track of the timeline with a default duration of one minute. As you add clips, the container will expand to match the duration of the longest video clip or audio track you add. As represented by these two buttons above the clip, multicam editing in LumaFusion involves a two-step process. In step one, you synchronize your angles, and in step two, you switch or cut to these synchronized angles as the clip plays back in real time. Tapping the Synchronizer button reveals a panel of color-coded drop zones for assigning clips and creating angles. The angles labeled 1 through 6 are the total available angles you can cut to. These drop zones accept both video and audio clips. The drop zone at the top of the stack is not an angle per se, but a means to assign an audio-only clip that you don't want to cut to during angle switching. A common use case is to place a mix master of a song into this drop zone, then cut to the band members as they perform it. Later in the video, I'll show you how to cut a performance video. But first, I want to show you how to perform a simple two-camera edit using footage from one of my YouTube product reviews. I'll tap and hold the camera A clip, then drag it into Drop Zone 1. I'll drag camera B into Drop Zone 2. Tapping the Drop Zone thumbnail loads the angle into the preview window. Tap the preview image to play the first angle. Camera B speed. Action when you're ready. All right, so we're ready to go. We have the Padcaster teleprompter hooked up, and because I'm in a noisier environment, I brought a lot. This clip has audio, but it's very noisy due to my shooting location. This is because I use the built-in mic of my camera to record reference audio. The same is true for the wide shot in the second angle. Shotgun mic, and uh, that'll help mitigate some of the surrounding environment of this very busy village green. For almost all my shoots, I record my audio on a separate digital audio recorder, and in this wide shot, you can see the shotgun mic I was using. In the media library, I'll locate the mono audio clip from the recorder and drop it into the angle 3 drop zone. I'll play it back so you can hear the difference. All right, so we're ready to go. We have the Padcaster teleprompter hooked up. Now that my angles are assigned, the next step is to sync them by tapping this button at the bottom of the UI. LumaFusion presents you with four syncing methods, automatic, audio, timecode, and manual. Automatic will attempt to use the best syncing method when both audio and timecode is available in a clip, with priority given to timecode if it exists. You can also sync using just the audio or just timecode. In cases where the audio is too poor for syncing and or a clip does not include timecode, you can choose to sync your clips manually by aligning the waveforms in a clip. My clips do not have timecode, but as you heard, they do have good reference audio to sync to, so I'll choose audio. In just a few seconds, my angles are synced. 
it's always a good idea to check your sync. With angle one selected, I'll scrub over to the beginning of the clip, looking for the frame where my hands are together. I'll select angle two, and at this playhead location, my hands are not together. This is why I always recommend recording some sort of sync reference at the start of your takes, whether it's an actual clapperboard or your hands. To address this, I'll use these buttons at the bottom of the window. With them, you can nudge an angle by a single frame forward or backward, or nudge in 10 frame increments. I'm going to nudge the angle backward by one frame until I see my hands completely closed. Switching back and forth between angles, I can see I'm on the correct frame and things should now be in perfect sync. Next, I need to address the poor audio quality from each camera source. By tapping the button below the angle number, a menu appears that lists the available audio sources from each angle, allowing me to remap the audio using a different source. So for example, let's say the audio from camera B was better than camera A, and I didn't have a separate audio file from a digital recorder. I could choose angle 2 from this menu so that whenever I cut to camera A, the audio we hear would be from camera B. But since I do have a separate audio recording that I've assigned to angle 3, that's the one I'll remap to. Notice the green bar along the bottom of the angle matches the color of angle 3. I'll remap angle 2's audio to angle 3 as well. With my angle synced and the audio quality issue resolved, I'm ready to do some editing. I'll tap the close button to exit the synchronizer. Back in the main timeline, the switcher button is now active and can be selected. Tapping it brings me to the switcher panel, where I see each angle as a separate thumbnail. The angle that is currently active appears with a white border around the thumbnail, and the video appears in the preview window. Moving the playhead anywhere over the clip and tapping another angle will switch to that angle at the current playhead location. By the way, when I say switch, I really mean cut, and I use these terms interchangeably throughout this tutorial. Tap the undo button to remove the edit. I should point out that if you wish to start with an angle other than the current angle, you'll need to tap the jump to start button, then switch the angle. If the playhead is anywhere else but at the start of the clip, you'll end up making a cut. I'll start with camera A, then tap once in the preview window to begin playback. To change angles, I'll just tap the thumbnail for the angle I want to switch to. All right, so we're ready to go. We have the Padcaster teleprompter hooked up. And because I'm in a noisier environment, I brought along my Rode NTG shotgun mic, and uh, that'll help mitigate some of the surrounding environment of this very busy village green. So let's go ahead and do our first read, see how it looks, we've got my remote. Let's do a take. Good video is about telling your story. It's what you're passionate about. Thousands of videos are posted online every day, but only a fraction of them get watched beyond the first minute. My name is Steve Martin, and I help people create better videos. Once you've completed your editing pass, you can zoom in or out on the timeline by using pinching gestures. The angle colors make it easy to identify where the angle switches occur. It's also really easy to fix mistakes. For example, in this first angle switch, I cut a bit early as the B camera is still hunting for focus. I'll zoom in just a bit, then drag over the angle until I locate a better frame to switch to. Once located, I'll tap the edit point to select it, then drag it over until it aligns with the playhead. I also feel like this angle is on screen a bit too long. I'll switch to another angle at the playhead location. When I'm finished making adjustments, I'll tap the close button to return to the main timeline. Because the multicam container behaves like any other clip, you can trim it, copy it, and add effects to it. I want to remove the section at the beginning of the clip with my sync clap. Using the waveform as a guide, I'll line up the playhead before I begin speaking, then trim the head of the clip until it snaps to the playhead. To add an effect, select the multicam container, then tap the presets menu. I'll choose the black and white effect. The effect is applied to every angle in the container. I'll undo that. If you want to apply the effect to a specific angle, tap the synchronizer button, Select the angle you want the effect applied to, tap the presets button, and apply the effect. Return to the main timeline, and you'll see the applied effect whenever that angle is switched to. Now let's look at another popular use case for multicam, a music performance. Here, I have an open, empty project. I'll tap to create a new multicam container, then tap the synchronizer button. Instead of adding each angle to a drop zone one at a time, 
I can add multiple clips and choose the angle they are assigned to before I add them. In the media library, I'll tap the multi-select button, then tap the wide shot, the single of Frank, then the single of Sheila. The number in the upper left of each thumbnail confirms the order. I'll tap and hold, then drag the group into the first drop zone, and they auto-assign themselves to the appropriate angle number. One of the issues with recording a music performance is the potential disparity between each of the performer's sound level, which would make cutting between them noticeably jarring to the listener. Whenever I record a live performance, I use a dedicated mixer recorder, like the Zoom H6, to which I connect all the mics to achieve a proper mix between the vocals and the instruments. This master mix is then recorded as a separate stereo file. At the top of the angle stack, you'll see a drop zone that LumaFusion refers to as the primary audio drop zone. This is where you would drop any audio file that you don't want to be cut along with the video. I'll drag my stereo master file into this drop zone. Because LumaFusion assumes that the primary sound will be used for playback during editing, the source audio for the other angles is muted automatically. Next, I'll sync the angles to the primary audio. Looking at the clapper spikes in the waveform, it looks like they're all in sync. But as I suggested previously, you should always check your sync. Looking good. I'll close the synchronizer to return to the main timeline, move the playhead before the song starts, tap the scissor icon to split the container, select the portion I want to remove, then tap the trash can. The primary audio track is automatically trimmed to match the remaining clip. I'll tap the clip again, then tap the switcher button. With the play it at the start of the clip, I'll select my starting angle, begin playback, and begin cutting to my angles. As I scrub over my completed edit, I noticed at this particular switch, Travis, my assistant, appears in the background. In order to swap this angle with another one, I'll tap the jump left button to move the playhead to the start of the angle, then tap a different angle. Remember, if the playhead is over an angle and you switch angles, a cut will be made. I'll play back a few more seconds of their performance. Let's return to the main timeline because I want to add a transition or two. I'll open the Transitions browser, then drag the cross dissolve over the first and second cut, then play back. Very nice. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard on your iPad, you can use it to cut to your angles instead of tapping your iPad screen. Here, I have a multicam container opened in the switcher panel of a four angle wedding. The number keys on my keyboard are mapped to the angle numbers. I'll tap the up arrow to move the playhead to the start of the timeline, press four to begin with the wide shot of the ceremony, then press the space bar to begin playback. Now I'll use the number pad to perform my angle switches. We've about the sacrifice, the vulnerability, the protection. We've exchanged rings made our vows, lit a unity candle, prayed that God would bless this union, and you have this crowd of witnesses ready to stand in defense of this marriage. I think we're about done. So what do you think of this new feature? Let us know in the comments below. Also, whether you actually edit on an iPhone or iPad. And thanks for watching.